Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekados Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is November the 19th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, I trust that you are feeling truly blessed in Jesus this morning, filled with his spirit, that your hopes are set high upon the things of heaven, and that you are thirsty for the word of the living God that can permeate your soul and transform you into the glorious image of heaven. Well, we are continuing our study in the book of Hebrews this morning, and yesterday when we left off, Midway through chapter 5, our subject matter is that of Jesus, who Jesus is. And the writer of Hebrews continues by saying in verse 11, Jesus, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing that you are dull of hearing. Have you ever met someone where you were telling them the glorious truths of our master Jesus? And yet you could sense that those truths were not sitting upon their soul, but were merely passing through their ears. And no matter how much effort you put into trying to communicate those truths, you could see they were not finding their mark. Well, this is because their senses are dull of hearing. And that's the problem that the writer of Hebrews is having with these that he is writing to. He says in verse 12, For when the time you ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And you are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Did you know that the last command that Jesus left for his people was to go into the world and make disciples? This means that we should be passing on to others we should be teaching them about the things of God, of what it means to live holy lives, moving beyond the early principles that we learn as babes in Christ and becoming a full age, mature in Christ, so that we can focus on the more important things. He says in verse 13, For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Or everyone who is a babe in Christ is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Well, the word of righteousness is the holy teachings that we have given to us throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And he says you are unskillful in the holy writings of God. And the reason for this is they are not wrestling with the holy writings of God. You see, when we read the Bible, the ultimate goal is to wrestle with ourselves, nailing ourselves to the cross, not allowing our own selves to be conformed to the things that it desires, but conforming ourselves to what the Bible teaches us. And so what we learn through this is our greatest enemy is ourselves. It is ourselves, our flesh that war against us every day. He says in verse 14, strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised. Exercise requires effort. It requires discipline. It requires hard work. And we are to put these spiritual disciplines into practice so that we may discern both good and evil that we can readily and easily identify what is on the side of righteousness and what is on the side of evil. And anything that is not righteous automatically falls into the category of evil. And this is what we are supposed to be teaching each other so that we can become built up in the things of God, we can become strong in the things of faith and holy living, and realize that the things that were once so difficult for us because we were babes in Christ, now that we are mature and we have come a full age, those things aren't so difficult any longer. Now we conquer them with ease. And that's why Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 
speaking to those who focus upon things that are not so important, he says in, in verse 1, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Prophesy simply means declaring the truth, teaching the truth. For he, in verse 2, that speaks in an unknown tongue, which seems to be the things that you have made of such importance, when you speak in an unknown tongue, you speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth you. Howbeit in the Spirit you speak mysteries. But, in verse 3, he that prophesies, he that declares truth, he that teaches, speaks unto men to edification and exhortation, and comfort. He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. But he that prophesies, declares truth, teaches another, edifies the body, the church. I would that you all spake with tongues, but rather, more importantly, that you prophesied, that you taught another, that you make disciples just as Jesus commanded of us. And that's how he begins chapter 6 of Hebrews. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, the teachings of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. There is a time for repentance, but then we must move past that. Not laying again the foundation of faith, we understand whom it is that we believe in, that we trust in, that we dedicate ourselves to and we obey. And so let us not stand in that faith alone, but let us put feet to our faith. Let us not lay again the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Let us move past these things. For these things mentioned are where we begin our journey but they don't carry us through our journey from day to day. You see, it is only natural when we begin the Christian life that our time is spent resisting the things of this world, the lures and temptations that this world offers us. But there comes a point where holiness becomes such a lifestyle. It becomes so normal for us that it's hard to remember what it was like to resist the things of the world because the things of the world are so distanced from us now. They don't hold the lure for us as they one time did. And that's how we know that we're growing as Christians because what once influenced us as children no longer has a hold on us as mature adults in Christ. And that's what the Holy Spirit is trying to communicate to the reader. We must work very diligently to press through these elementary issues, these babes in Christ stages of growth, so that we can become the full and mature people of God that he has destined us to be. Well, we're going to close there today, friends, and I pray and trust that the word of God is having an impact on your life that you are being transformed by the renewing of your mind and that your senses are being exercised to discern between good and evil. Now, as the Lord Jesus wills, friends, and until next time, I truly love you and I'll see you on the next video.